Hey friends, Scott Hanselman here. Uh, this week at Connect in New York, I'm going to be announcing uh, on stage with Scott Guthrie this thing called Visual Studio Connected Environment. Actually, I guess it's already announced because this is my practice video that I'm doing. So if you're watching this, you've seen it happen, and it's pretty cool. So I'm going to kind of do my do my demo that I'm practicing here, and I'll give you a little bit of extra commentary. All right. So. Our Hotel 360 booking site that we've got here has these loyalty discounts, you know. Uh, the 300 bucks a night in New York is nuts. I'm not going to spend 300 bucks. Turns out the problem is that there's a bug where the discount isn't always getting applied to the customer. Now, I want to go and troubleshoot this, uh, this bug, and I've got the discount service opened up into Visual Studio. Now, what's interesting here is that this isn't just an app. We've got a number of microservices that are all deployed to Kubernetes. I'm going to actually right click here in Visual Studio and say open Kubernetes dashboard. And I'm looking at Kubernetes and being proxied to Kubernetes that's running in Azure. Uh, our application has a number of microservices. We've got the web front end, we've got a booking service, profiles, discounts, reviews. You know, it's broken up into its component parts like you would expect, which is pretty amazing and cool in production. But when you're developing, it can be a little bit overwhelming especially if I wanted to get this running on my local laptop. I would need to figure out how to set up Kubernetes locally, uh, build and run all the other microservices, some of which are running in Node or Python, uh, one of them is in .NET Core. Uh, and then what other services would I need to talk to? There's things that are running in Azure that aren't running in containers that may not be accessible from my laptop. So what Visual Studio Connected Environment does is it makes that normal compile, edit, debug, loop, work with a development environment running in Azure, running in Kubernetes. So it's pretty sweet. Uh, and I'm actually pretty excited to, uh, to be able to demo it. So ordinarily, of course, you hit F5 and you run IIS Express and it runs locally. But again, dependencies, challenges. Instead, I'm going to click on Connected Environment for AKS, the Azure Kubernetes stuff here. And uh, notice that it's going to go and pick that environment. And I've also got a space to choose from. These are different spaces, like my own personal space, so that I don't affect the rest of the team in case I uh, introduce some bugs and stuff like that. I'll show you a slide that explains that in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and connect to that. And now, at this point, I've set a breakpoint. And I'm just going to hit F5 or hit the play button there. And you see things flying by here in the output as it goes and, and prepares things. You see that local host, you might be expecting that something's going to happen uh, on local host like it usually does when you connect to IIS Express. But instead, this is something more interesting. Check this out. So we're loading up here. We're doing our regular debug in there. And look at the URL. I'm actually in Azure right now. So it's my own development environment. Look, and it actually popped the the, the breakpoint. So I'm in an Azure URL. This is my code running the same way it would ordinarily run in production. Okay. And I want to also point out in uh, over here in Visual Studio in our breakpoint that we're referring to those live, or in this case, live in our development environment services with the Kubernetes DNS. So we refer to them by name. I'm going to go and hit F10 and I'm doing breakpoints. I'm doing live debugging except the live debugging is actually happening up in uh, in Azure, in, uh, in Kubernetes. Now, okay, my user ID is a zero. That is wrong. Uh, let me scroll up into my output. Okay, here internally we were calling the discount service. So here I am in discount. Someone called me with ALFKI, ALF key, and it came in as a zero because that's a string and that's an int. Not cool. I'm going to stop that, change that int to a string. Hit F5 again. It, it feels to me faster than even doing it with IIS Express, which is pretty cool. And it makes sense because it's my laptop, right? My laptop's never going to be as fast as uh, an entire cloud full of computers. Uh, additionally, if you remember earlier this week, I went and set up Kubernetes on the bare metal, and I set it up on a whole bunch of Raspberry Pis. Setting up Kubernetes can be a little bit challenging. Uh, even messing with Minikube is kind of a hassle. Here, I can just set it up in, instantly in uh in the cloud. And there we go. So I hit that and looks like my string. Did it get passed in? Yes. Alf key is passed in. Cool. So now we're going to call that profile service. Call that. All right. And okay. So we got a 404. So something is still wrong on that one. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue and turn that off. Turns out that the 
service that I'm calling the profile service is written in Node. So I could switch over to another machine, could be a Mac, could be a Linux machine running Ubuntu. In this case, I'm in Visual Studio Code and we're looking at the Node application. This is the profile service. So discounts is in .NET, profiles is in Node. And you'll see here, there's my mistake. Again, it's assuming that it was a decimal. The regular expression there is saying one or more uh, decimals. Uh, looks like, again, they changed the interface and I didn't pay attention. We're going to go ahead and change that to take a string. And uh, of course, because it is Kubernetes, you know, I could go into my terminal and look at kube get pod or get services. It's all, it's real Kubernetes, right? It's just being uh, integrated into Visual Studio in a really cool way. So now I'm going to hit F5, except now I'm hitting F5 inside of Visual Studio Code. It's going to do that same stuff, right? It's going to send that code change up and it's going to go and build the containers, deploy them into Kubernetes. This is kind of a hassle, that inner loop, right? That make a change, hit a five, make a change, hit a five. It's a lot easier uh, when you've got it all automated like this. All right, so now we've got our debugging set up. I'll go back over here and I will hit refresh. Yep, and then you see it's blinking down here. It looks like we hit that breakpoint. I'm gonna switch over to debugging here. And let's look at that request. Collapse some of these. Get the full call stack. It's local debugging, right? So there's there you go. There's profile slash alfkey. It's coming in now, and I can go and do all the kind of stuff as if I were doing it locally, right? Except I'm debugging in an environment that feels like production because it's the same kind of environment that I would put in production. It's using Kubernetes. It's using the Visual Studio connected environment. It's really, really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and hit F5. Let's go back over here and see if I got a discount. I did. Good. Okay. So I fixed my profile service. I fixed my discount service. So this is kind of the general idea of what we've uh, released. It's, uh, it's in a preview. You can go and learn about it. I'll have a link in my blog post here. But the idea is that you can kind of easily F5 the code directly in Kubernetes in Azure. It's running in an environment in the cloud that's close to what you would run in production. You can test your app end-to-end, -end, right, as you uh, interact with other microservices, okay? You get that same great development experience in Visual Studio, in Visual Studio Code, Mac, or Windows. Now, remember before when I mentioned that idea of spaces, I could have my own personal space. Check this out. Because I'm worried I might break things for other people, I could introduce this idea of a space, my own personal space. So check out this quick little slide I made, right? So my team is talking to the web front end, which calls discounts, which calls profiles, except uh, I've got my own branch, right? Just like I have my own branch in source control, I have my own pod, my own container, my own space, my own namespace inside of Kubernetes so that when I go and hit the web front end, it'll hit discounts and then hit profiles. And in fact, what I can do is I can go back over here into the browser and look at my application. And you see here where it says public web, I could say something like Scott or you know Anna or whoever and then get their environment. This way I can work in my own space uh, and I have a environment that is as much like production as possible except I'm assured that just my microservices, the ones that I care about, are, are being seen and I won't break things for the rest of the team. So it's a really great kind of dev test environment and again all integrated in Visual Studio. It's pretty cool. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out the other videos of demos and cool stuff that we did at Connect this year in New York. There's a whole series of, of different uh, sessions and on-demand videos and training. Uh, anyway, I'm practicing this. This video was recorded a week before. Uh, I hope that uh, you enjoyed it because uh, it's going to be pretty sweet. Thanks.